the climate crisis, the greatest challenge of our time. It all started with the Industrial Revolution. That is when the burning of coal, oil, and natural gas began and caused the CO2 content of the world's atmosphere to dramatically increase. Since then, global warming has been getting stronger and stronger, driven by more and more CO2 emissions from fossil energy. But what exactly is CO2? This greenhouse gas heats up our planet. The more of it there is in the air, the warmer it gets. But without CO2, there would be no life on Earth. That is because all plants and other living things need it for their energy supply and growth. With the help of solar energy and water, plants convert CO2 into biomass. Half of the biomass produced and the solar energy it stores inside is consumed by the plant itself. The carbon is released again by plant respiration. The rest is stored in leaves, fruits and seeds, branches, roots and trunk. In autumn, the leaves and fruits decompose. The next year, the cycle starts all over again. As long as the plant is alive, it stores carbon until the uptake decreases and the tree eventually dies. After that, all the carbon is released back into the air. However, in the forest, there are many young trees that can absorb CO2. Overall, the forest absorbs as much CO2 as it emits. The cycle is in equilibrium, which means that it is CO2 neutral. The natural carbon cycle consists of two key parts, photosynthesis, which involves the plant absorbing CO2 and producing biomass with the help of sunlight and water, and oxidation, where the plant transforms the biomass into energy and in turn releases CO2. Exactly the same amount of CO2 is released as was previously absorbed. What's interesting is that it doesn't matter whether biomass rots, is eaten, or is burned by us humans. The process always emits the same amount of CO2 that the plant absorbed beforehand. This can be seen in the equation for photosynthesis. That's why biomass is CO2 neutral. The situation with fossil fuels is quite different. Fossil fuel carbon was removed from the air millions of years ago and trapped in the Earth's crust. This has caused our planet to cool over time. Until now. Excessive extraction of coal, natural gas and oil is removing carbon from the Earth and relentlessly driving climate change. Every year, the process of burning fossil fuels pumps around 8 billion tons of carbon out of the Earth's crust into the atmosphere. That is why we have to replace fossil energy with renewable energy as fast as we can. The natural carbon cycle contains 120 billion tons of carbon. If we succeed in using approximately just 5% of this for bioenergy, we can stop using coal, oil and gas. Managed forestry can help us to achieve this in several ways. That is because more than 40% of photosynthesis worldwide takes place in managed forests. At the same time, forests are the world's most important renewable energy source. Sustainable forestry and timber management, according to the European model, makes 10% of the natural carbon cycle in the forest available to us. During timber harvesting, the small branches and rootstock remain in the forest. Wood, used to generate energy, is generally low quality wood in the form of chips or chopped logs and they are mainly used regionally. Industrial wood becomes pulp, cardboard or paper, creating wood byproducts that can generate even more renewable energy. The most valuable wood, sawn logs, is processed to make durable wood products. These store part of the carbon over the long term. For every cubic meter of wood used, 6 to 10 cubic meters of byproducts are produced in the forest, sawmill, and during processing. 
Some of this is used as wood pellets. All wood that is not left to decompose can be used to help replace fossil fuels such as coal, oil and natural gas and climate damaging building materials, protecting the climate as a result. And it is high time because climate change is also affecting the forest. Using wood helps a forest in several ways. Damaged areas are quickly replanted. Aging or unusable trees are removed and healthy trees are given more space. This process actively promotes trees that are better adapted to the changing climate. By using modern technology, we can even make bioenergy CO2 negative by capturing the carbon during energy production and storing it in the ground. Ultimately, the climate may actually cool down once we have stopped using fossil fuels. If we combine all these opportunities together with energy conservation and other renewable energy sources, the forest will deliver its full potential and offer a way out of the climate crisis. Time is running out, every day counts, but together we can avert the crisis.